What's up guys, it's Trevor Hagen and this is Beyond Transmission. Today we are in Prague, Czech Republic. I gotta say, this is probably one of my favorite cities that I've ever visited. If you've never been, I highly recommend putting this place on your bucket list. Anyway, today we are talking about something that I think is fundamental to understand if you're interested in personal or spiritual growth, and that is cognitive biases. We're gonna define what that means, talk about the most common ones we use daily that can hold us back from making progress, making logical decisions, and how to deal with them. So, just to define it, a cognitive bias refers to the systematic pattern of deviation from norm or rationality in judgment, whereby interferences about other people and situations may be drawn in an illogical fashion. Individuals create their own subjective social reality from their perception of the input. Okay, so I know that that sounds really fancy, but it's really just as simple as our trained brains sometimes fool us into making bad decisions. That's really it. So most cognitive biases are generational, meaning they are passed on from those who raised us um, along with our social and cultural upbringing. And some are pretty funny actually when you look at them because they can affect our behavior in uh, humorous ways sometimes. Uh, all of these things go into conditioning our brain, but as we get older, uh, we start using personal experience to derive our own biases. And these are created quite quickly, usually in our childhood or adolescence, and they're typically held onto for a lifetime. So first off, we're all subject to cognitive biases. Nobody's excluded. But why is it good to know what biases are and what biases you have and learning how to deal with them? Well, these glitches, I would say, in our thinking can actually act as mental obstacles that cause us to make questionable decisions and even reach erroneous conclusions. So when it comes to making decisions, I think we should want to make the most logical ones based on what we really want and what will be best for the goals that we have personally and as a society as well. So we may not be able to escape them entirely, but we can at least be aware of them in ourselves and in others. And that way we can use all of this to our advantage when it comes to uh, making decisions and understanding those around us. So let's get started, first of all, with an example that's going to kind of put all of this into perspective. Go ahead and take a listen to this. Okay, so just like biases, sometimes things don't make logical sense to us because we are literally unable to decipher the truth because we just can't filter through all the garble with so much information at our disposal. However, after taking the time to filter through the information with an unbiased approach, we are then able to learn things that we would not have been able to before if we were just to dismiss it, to dismiss it initially. So let's listen to the sound bite just one more time. It was a funny day in the church of the park. Okay. So now, once you hear this next clip, you can never go back. So let's now listen to this. It was a sunny day and the children were going to the park. Okay, so now that you've heard that, let's listen to the first one again and see if you hear it any different. It was a sunny day and the children were going to the park. You see? Now, if you were talking with somebody that had never heard the second clip, they would argue that it's probably just gibberish, but you would know better. And this is the advantage to looking beyond what's on the surface and cutting through the noise. Biases obviously change based on experience, but most will never find the truth behind the noise because they simply don't know to search for it. Most of us search for information to support our existing beliefs because doing otherwise is extremely uncomfortable. If you want to find it, you will find it. And that's actually the danger of all of the information that we have at our fingertips. It can either be an incredible tool 
for learning or another trap that hinders your growth and only feeds your already existing biases. So in order to find truth and operate with a fully open mind and a logical mind, it's crucial that we doubt everything and understand what our biases really are. But how do living by these biases really serve us at the end of the day if we're ultimately in search of personal progress and the progress of humankind? See, these cognitive biases are examples of the negative power that the ego has on all of us. This sense of pride and just being correct all of the time. It's just simply not worth defending. There are many biases that, that exist out there, but I just wanted to look at the top five or my top favorite five cognitive biases so we can begin to recognize them when they show up in our own lives and see how they can affect our decision making. So number one is confirmation bias. We love to agree with people who agree with us. We all know this. It's why we only visit websites or uh, channel TV channels that express our own political views our own opinions, uh, and why we mostly hang around people who hold similar views and tastes. Think about how often do you hang out with people of different political, religious, or world views? How often do you watch CNN versus Fox News or vice versa? Do you engage in interesting conversations with people that may disagree with your standpoint on things on a regular basis to learn where they might be coming from and learn how you can progress? See, we tend to be put off by individuals, groups, news sources that make us feel uncomfortable or insecure about our current views. It's what the behavioral psychologist B.F. Skinner called cognitive dissonance. It's this preferential mode of behavior that leads to the confirmation bias. The often unconscious act of referencing only those perspectives that fuel our pre-existing views while at the same time ignoring or dismissing opinions, no matter how valid, that threaten our worldview. And paradoxically, the internet has only made this tendency worse. When you wanna find an answer to an argument, as I said before, you will only search for and thus find exactly what will confirm your bias and make you feel better for believing that way and thus avoiding uncomfortable change in your life or a bruised ego. This is why it's literally impossible to have an intelligent conversation with anyone about something like climate change. And no, I'm not even gonna start with what my bias is on that subject, but just note that by constantly feeding what makes you feel better about what you already believe is a guarantee to limit personal development and spiritual progress. Okay, number two, availability heuristic bias. People overestimate likelihoods from the information that they have. Some people think that terrorism, for example, is the biggest threat to the United States because that's what they see on TV, the news always talks about it, et cetera. And because of that, it inflates the danger. But if you actually look at the real statistics, televisions cause 55 times more deaths than terrorism alone. Yeah, I'm saying TVs that literally fall on people and kill them happens 55 times more than terrorism itself. So you're actually much more likely to die from a cow or a coconut falling on your head than a terrorist. In fact, even the police that are hired and trusted to protect you from things like a terrorist attack are 130 times more likely to kill you than a terrorist. That's because people don't usually fret or make their decisions based on facts and statistics, but rather on news and what people are talking about most of the time. It's way scarier to die from a terrorist attack than a coconut to the head. And that's why the news covers it, because there's much more money in it. This also ties in with neglecting probability, like people being more afraid to fly than to get into a car. Even though your chances of dying in a car are one out of 86, and in a plane are one out of more than 10,000. The third bias is called the bandwagon effect. We all wanna be part of the in crowd, and most of the time we will believe or go along with something not because we know for ourselves or have experience in the matter, but more because it's what we see everyone else doing or saying, 
and we just assume it to be true and go along with it. It happens a lot with us in more ways than you think, like when it comes to voting, investing, and in smaller groups that are making decisions. For example, if there are 10 people in a room and nine are in agreement with an idea that may not make sense to you, you're most likely to go along with it. I had the bandwagon effect backfire me once, and it was quite embarrassing actually. I went into a magic show. The magician had me step out of the room in order to uh, grab a couple drinks. I was kind of confused why, but when I came back, um, what I didn't know is that while I was out, he informed everybody that he was going to tell a joke that makes no sense, and, uh, but that everybody should laugh. And so I came back, he told the joke, everyone, everyone just went crazy laughing over it. I didn't get the joke, but I just laughed anyway just to kind of fit in. And then he singled me out and asked me to explain the joke. So needless to say, it was, it was pretty embarrassing, but the effect can be quite powerful and can lead to poor leadership and decision making if you sway more with the in crowd and less with your intellect. Okay, the fourth is choice supportive bias. Just because you made a decision, you're willing to defend that decision regardless of whether that decision was actually good, bad, effective, ineffective, etc. For example, while here traveling in Prague, I've had the experience where I've picked a restaurant that a few others weren't too excited about. And I noticed that I was overly excited about the food and asking others what they thought, somewhat steering them to like a more positive reaction. If somebody didn't want to eat there, I saw they were more likely to convince themselves that it was a bad experience. You can also see this with people and technology. Just ask somebody that has a Mac and an iPhone what they think of PC and Android or vice versa. It's easy to see the advantages of whatever decisions you make and not the downsides. Because after all, who wants to admit that they made a bad decision, right? Also, if you vote for a certain political leader, you're much more willing to forgive the missteps made and applaud and focus on any improvements that that leader makes. Same goes for if you didn't vote for someone. Now every tiny thing that goes wrong is amplified, whereas at the same time, any positive action taken is hardly recognized. Okay, the fifth top bias is called the ostrich bias. This is where we would rather sink our heads in the sand than pay any attention to negative information regarding a subject that means something to us. We're literally blind and deaf when it comes to anything that goes against what we believe. And this one happens all of the time without us even realizing it. Sometimes when we have a problem, we will ignore it hoping that it'll just go away. To avoid finding any negative information on certain things, we simply just stop looking for it and literally can't see it when it arises. We see this with people that are part of groups that maybe don't make sense to the outsiders, but the insiders cannot be affected by any negative information shared with them about the group. They just don't see it. Another example would be smokers that never quit because they honestly believe that they are the outliers and the negative effects just don't apply to them. This is what I would call, as I mentioned before, a glitch in the computer of your brain that can lead to illogical decision making over time. In fact, this would be considered a crime in most scientific laboratories and basically promotes ignorance. So as you could see, there are many biases that can affect our ability to see clearly and make logical decisions on a daily basis. These are just my top five out of hundreds that exist. But when it comes to dealing with these in ourselves and others, I have a couple tips. The first thing would be to understand that these aren't things that you can change in other people. You can explain a bias to someone, but it has to come from within their own brain to recognize the bias that they hold. So when seeing these things in others, you can joke with them or just be patient because at the end of the day, only the computer can be reprogrammed by itself. The second thing is just really, when you notice these biases happening within your own brain, the first thing to do is recognize they're happening. That's actually the most important thing that you can do because retraining or resetting your brain is just not gonna happen. Just simply understand that you are biased and then go about your life with that in mind. A good question to ask yourself when it comes to decision time and personal progress is as simple as this. Am I currently being biased? 
Anyway, guys, with that said, it's been something interesting for me that I've been learning. Again, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe and please leave a comment below if you have any questions or experiences with biases that you'd like to share. Stay curious and we'll see you next time.